think this is impromptu. <laughs> Let us join our hearts in prayer. <clears throat> oh, loving God, what a tremendous blessing it is to be here on this Christmas Eve, to gather to worship you and to sing praise for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for this day and what it means to us. For many of us in this room, this day brings together family. It brings together friends. It brings us together from many different places and we are so grateful that this day we are able to be here in your presence. Dear Lord, as we gather to worship this day and as we experience together this Lessons and Carols presentation here today, we trust and pray that before we depart here this morning, we will all have a deeper understanding of what this season is all about. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Son. Thank you for this church, for its ministries, and for all those who have gathered here this day. And may we always rejoice that wherever we are, we sense your presence. And may we rejoice that long ago, you gave us the greatest gift of all. And through your Son, Jesus Christ, all of us have been given life and hope and peace and joy and so much more. Now guide us and bless us as we worship together this day. In the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
children up through eight, up through grades five can join Pastor Krista in the back where you can proceed to children's worship. Dear people of God, in this Christmas season with joy, let us hear once more the message of the angels and in heart and mind go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion to the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died. Let us remember in Christ's name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, all who are sick and who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom the Lord Jesus, we are one forevermore. And now, to sum up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless us. May Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. May the King of Angels bring us all to join the fellowship of the saints who have gone before us. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, when evening came, they heard the Lord God walking in the garden. They went to a secluded place among the trees of the garden to hide from God. Then God called to Adam, where are you? Adam answered, I hear your voice in the garden. Because I was naked, I was afraid and tried to hide. God asked, who told you you were naked? Did you eat the fruit from the tree that I told you not to eat? Adam answered, The woman you gave to me offered me the fruit and I ate it. God spoke to the woman, Why did you do this? She replied, The snake tricked me into eating it. God said to the snake, You will be punished for this. You alone among all the animals will bear the curse. On your belly you will crawl, and you will eat dust as long as you live. From now on you will strike fear in the hearts of people of all generations. When you attack their heels, they will crush your head. 
Thanks be to God. lesson from the book of Genesis chapter 22 verses 15 through 18 God promised a faithful Abraham that his descendants will be a blessing to all nations of the earth the angel of the Lord called from heaven to Abraham a second time I will make a vow with you yes by my own name that I will richly bless you I promise that I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky or grains of sand along the seashore. Your descendants will rule over the enemies because you have obeyed my voice. Your descendants will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Thanks be to God.
From Isaiah, Christ's birth. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Once they lived in a land of deep darkness, now light is shining on them. For us, a child is born, a son is given. He will rule with authority. He will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His power will increase, and the throne of David and his kingdom will have endless peace. Justice and righteousness will be his authority from this time onward and forevermore. Thanks be to God. In our fourth lesson, 
we are taught the peace that Christ brings. There shall grow a shoot from the tree of Jesse, and a branch shall spring from his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and a reverence for the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees or decide by what he hears. He will tend the poor with justice and defend the rights of the helpless. The wolf and the lamb will live together in peace. The leopard and child will rest together. The calf and the young lion will feed together. And a little child will take care of them. Cows and bears will eat together. Their young ones will live in peace. The lion shall eat straw like cattle. Even a baby will not be harmed if it plays near the hole of a snake. There shall be nothing harmful or evil on God's holy mountain. <coughs> the earth shall be as full of the knowledge of the Lord as waters that cover the sea. Thanks be to God. Luke records the angel Gabriel's announcement to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. The angel appeared to Mary, a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Greetings, most favored one, said the angel. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might mean. 
Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for God has been gracious to you. You shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall give him the name Jesus. He will be great. He will bear the title Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will be king over Israel forever. His reign shall have no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? I, I'm still a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy child to be born will be called the Son of God. <coughs> then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, as you have spoken, so be it. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. In our sixth lesson, we will hear the story of the birth of Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus took place. Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph. Before their marriage, she was to have a child by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, being a man of principle, and at the same time, not wanting to disgrace Mary, desired to have the marriage contract set aside quietly. But just when he resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home with you as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the world, for he will save the people from their sins. 
All this happened in order to fulfill what the Lord declared through the prophet. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, a name which means God with us. Thank you. Be to God. There were some shepherds in that part of the country keeping watch over the night of their flocks when suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. There is great joy coming to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, a Lord, the Lord, and this is your sign. The baby will be lying wrapped in little strips of cloth in a manger. All at once there was, with the angel, a great host of heavenly angels singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come, we must go straight to Bethlehem and see the thing that's happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they ran and found their way to Mary and Joseph. As was told them, the baby was lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
<coughs> In the eighth lesson, the wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Jesus was born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of Herod. Wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who is born to be king of the Jews? We have seen the rising of the star, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly perturbed, and so was all Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the chief priests and lawyers of the people and put this question before them. Where is the Messiah to be born? They answered, In Bethlehem of Judea, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a leader to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod <coughs> called the wise men to meet him in private and learn from them the exact time when the star appeared. Go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may also go and worship him. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising. It stopped over the place where the child lay. At the sight of the star, they were overjoyed. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned home another way. Thanks be to God.
John unfolds a great mystery. <coughs> when all things began, the Word was there already. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing was created without the Word. The Word gave light, life, light to all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and to this day, the darkness has not extinguished it. For the light to be made known, God sent a messenger, a man named John. John was not the light, but he came to witness the light, the true light that comes to the world to shine on all people. The word was in the world, though the world owed its very existence to the word, the world did not recognize the word. However, those who heard and believed received power to become children of God, not children born in a human sense of man and woman, flesh and blood, but rather as true children of God. So the word became flesh and lived among us, through the glory of God, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. And with this great joy, let us all stand.
what a great joy and privilege it has been to share in this time of lessons and carols. I hope and pray that your heart has been touched here today. And I hope and pray that as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, that all of us will be reminded of the words we have heard this day. For unto us a son is born. Unto us a son is given. And today we celebrate this. And I want to take just a moment to thank this wonderful choir and all those who participated, our readers, our director, everyone. I thank you from the depths of my heart. What an honor it has been to see with you today. God bless you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, as we celebrate the birth of your Son, our hearts have been stirred this day. And we have been given a glimpse of what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. Lord, in the hours to come, as we prepare to return to this place this evening, we ask that you will just open our hearts to experience the joy that your Son brings to us in ways perhaps we've never experienced before. Go with us. Keep us in your love and care. And may we rejoice that you have brought us together in this place to celebrate the birth of our Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.